is great to have everybody. Welcome to tonight's Zoom. Uh, I've already shared with you some key announcements, but I want to uh, uh, start off tonight. We're going to uh, have Pastor Abram come on and share for a minute. He recorded a video. I just watched it literally just a little bit ago. It is outstanding. And so I just can't believe we're in the last month of 2018. Really think about it. It's December 5th. We're in the last month. We, that means we have two Zooms left. Our final two Zooms are this week and next week. And so next week is our grand finale of 2018, and we're going to maximize them. And so without further ado, I want to have Pastor Abram come on and share his word. Get your notebooks ready because he has a few things that I didn't get written down that he shared, and uh, it's well worth it. Let's go, Pastor I'm so Abram. so excited about tonight to be able to get on here. Uh, with you, Legacy Zoom, and to share uh, what God has put in my heart. I know that uh, it will encourage you, and I pray that it will uh, help you run uh, your race and to finish strong. Uh, and that's what we're talking about tonight, about being a finisher. And so I'm just going to jump right in. You know, when I think about a finisher, uh, I, I don't really think about the de definition as much as I get a mental picture of the guy who stretches his whole body across the finish line in a race, right? The guy who finishes strong, that to me is is the definition. get disinterested or, you know, I just got uh, caught up in other things. Uh, I want to be a finisher. So I'm going back actually right now and, and I'm reading those books that I started. Um, and so I want to encourage you, uh, maybe that's a step that you could take tonight in being a finisher. Uh, pick up the books that you might have laid down or think about the things God has spoken to you that you haven't uh, followed through with <clears throat> because God wants you to be a finisher. My first point tonight is, Finishing isn't always convenient or glamorous. You see, many times when we think about uh, uh, the runners in a race, we're focused on the guy out front most of the time, the guy who's going to get the gold medal. But I want to stop and think about the people who sacrifice if not more time, energy, and effort. <clears throat> that veteran who uh, is missing a leg or, or they're in a wheelchair or that mom who's just like, I'm just going to go for it. This is on my bucket list. Um, you see, they might not get the, the applause, the medals, or the accolades, but that's not what they were there for. They were there to run their race. They were there to do their part and finish strong. They might have known, oh, I'm not going to be in first place, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish my race. You see, I think uh, this is such a huge one for us to realize that when we're running our race, we're not in competition with anybody around us. We're running the race that God has for us. And if that's out front, great. If that's out in the middle, right, I'm going to run my race because we can't run somebody else's race. And we can't try to take on all this glamour and all this, you know, all these accolades because God has called us to uh, run a specific race individually. <clears throat> my second point is pace yourself to the finish line. I remember running my first 5K. Um, in Huntsville, Alabama, we were doing it for uh, foster uh, children uh, to raise money. And um, I really didn't know what to expect. I got out there, I started running, and uh, I got about halfway through this 5K, which is uh, 3.11 miles. And there was this older gentleman who kept passing me. And I'd be like, no. And I would just run and I'd get past him, and then he would slowly pass me again. And so, I thought about it. I was like, well, you know what? Maybe I should just get behind this guy since he keeps passing. So I got behind him. I got in the same stride, the same pace as him. You know what? It was hard to keep up at first. But I was determined to stay behind him 
And I believe that the same thing can be true for our lives is that Jesus has a pace for our life. If we follow behind him, not saying it's going to be easy, but we're going to finish our race and we'll finish it strong. And it's one step at a time. It's, uh, you know, before we reach our finish line, we have to finish 99.9% of the race first. And so knowing that uh, finishing the race is one step at a time. And with that pace, you know, if I started clapping right now, everyone would start clapping along and be on the same beat. But if I started clapping faster, you could keep up, right? Well, God, I feel like God has a, a pace for our life, a pace of grace for each and every one of our lives that he wants us to be at. And if we're trying to go way too fast, the season that he's called us to run, you know, a certain pace a little bit slower, then we're going to fall behind. We will not be running as fast as we need to be. And the reason why I say that is because we might find ourselves striving instead of striding. There's a big difference. And I feel like God wants us to stride towards the finish line. The next one I have is our now leads to our next. Our now leads to our next. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day who is he's in leader, uh, leadership position in a church. And he is just at this place where he's ready to move on to the next season. I, I told him, I, I was like, hey, man, finish with the win in your face because your now leads to your next. You know, I told, I was encouraging him. I was telling him what I felt like God was trying to do in his life. And uh, I feel like many times we tend to try to get ahead of God. And we don't finish strong because we're trying to move on to the next thing. But God's saying, no. Follow through with this. Now I'll lead you to your next. I remember telling him, stay the course, man. Stay the course. When things get hard, stay the course. Stay on the, the track and the pace that God has called you to. Don't let it move you. Even when it gets hard, uh, he's going through some hard times and just some difficult uh, things have come up. I'm like, man, just press through. There's victory on the other side. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, at your finish line, God has a reward. <clears throat> You know, uh, speaking of finishers, I love Leonard Ravenhill. What a what a man of faith who finished strong. You know, uh, one thing that he said, I love this quote. He says, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within a lifetime of the opportunity. I don't want to look back in my life and say, man, I wish I would have done that different. I want to seize every opportunity that God has given me and finish strong with it. I hope that's what you uh, want with your life also to me. I want to wrap this up by saying uh, the most amazing finish in history isn't a Hail Mary football pass for a touchdown uh, for a national championship. It isn't the guy who's finished a marathon out front first place. It isn't all of those things. It might not even be our race. It isn't our race. The most amazing finish in history is when Jesus said in John 1930, it is finished because he had finished the work that God had put in his life. Before that, we find Jesus in Luke twenty-two forty-two saying, Father, if you're willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet I want your will to be done, not mine. You see, tonight, one of the most important things about finishing is being at a place of surrender to God, saying, not my will, God, but your will be done. I believe in that. We will set ourselves up to be finishers. I love you guys. Thank you for the opportunity. See you later. Man. Oh, man. Was that good. I don't know if, if you wrote anything down, but there were a couple things uh, that really jumped out to me. That Leonard Ravenhill quote, that's what stood out to me earlier, and it jumped out again. The opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of that opportunity. And we haven't even discussed that, maximizing opportunities and, and, and following the promptings of the Holy Spirit and different things. But that was so good. But also, we're not in competition with other people. Understand, you're not in competition with other people. You're not in, in competition with anybody in the church. 
You know, we're in the race that God has set out before us individually and for our families. And so what God's doing in the Kenny's life is, is far different and really inconsequential to what God's doing in Drew's life or in my life or Alice's life or Brooke's life and on and on and on. And so I wouldn't have to worry or get upset if this person gets blessed. Praise God, because they're in a, they're in a different race than we are. And then he asked, are you striding towards the finish line? Or are you striving towards the finish line? Man, that was good stuff. I want to jump in uh, to my word. I need to share my screen. Hopefully I don't blow it. But uh, with, the, with it being uh, two uh, Zooms left, I wanted to start with this scripture. Um, man, can I get it up in there to play crud? Let me see. There we go. Bam. And everything, no, nope, get back there. Huh, you guys are now, huh. Oh, well, I won't be able to see the, uh, the uh, whatever, the, the slides because your wonderful faces are covering everything that I have written for whatever reason. But uh, Psalm 65, 11, one of my favorite verses that honestly has left off the page during my Bible reading time uh, several years ago. David says, you crown the year with your goodness. Not just goodness, God with your goodness. And then I love this, your ways overflow with plenty. Another translation says with abundance. And another translation says your paths overflow with plenty or overflow with abundance, but you crown the year with your goodness. That's become a goal of mine to experience every year for the past few years. I want to experience God crowning my year with his goodness. I'm sure you do too. That word crown, I looked it up. Guess what it means? To crown, to place a crown on somebody, but it also means to surround. How many like to be surrounded by God's goodness? Not just goodness in general, but by the goodness of God. That means when you're surrounded by it, everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, you're surrounded by his goodness. And so we have a part to play in that. Our part is abiding in him. Like it says in John 15, we are to abide in him because you hear me say this all the time. In him is everything we need. Please get this. Please let this be revelation to you, even if you've heard me say it a thousand times. In Him, we're satisfied. In God, we are fulfilled. In Him, we experience His goodness. In Him, we can finish 2018 strong, and we can go into 2019 with momentum, with breakthrough, and with achievement. Anybody interested in that? Yes, I am. I, okay, I see head shaking, except for my wife. All I see is a ceiling, but that's okay. And so um, I love what Gary Ryan Blair, I came across this guy this week. <clears throat> Gary Ryan Blair, I'm going to use probably three or four quotes from him tonight. Uh, and, and they're all about finishing strong. The first one is every task, every goal, race, and year comes to an end. Therefore, make it a habit to finish strong. Every year comes to an end. Let's finish strong. Every task we have comes to an end. Let's finish strong. Every goal, every race comes to an end. Uh, uh, might as well finish strong. We've said this for years. How you end one thing is going to determine how you'll start another. So let's determine to finish 2018 strong so we can start 2019 strong. Sound good? All right. I'm assuming, yes, there we go, Brooke. Thank you for smiling and shaking your head, not just kind of mindlessly doing that. I appreciate that. We're in the home stretch of 2018, and, and this is the time to take advantage of the season. This is the time to kick it into high gear. Now, that may seem counterintuitive. Because typically, this is the time we want to sit back, relax, pat ourselves on the back for a job well done, or chill out because we're exhausted from the year, we're exhausted from the season. But again, Gary, Allen, Ryan Gary Blair says, what kind of competitor sees the finish line and slows down? Always finish strong. Think about that. You never see a runner like a sprinter. You never see a swimmer slow down near the finish line. 
I mean, unless it's like Usain Bolt and he's, you know, 30 meters ahead of everybody else and he's looking back and he's showing up. Everybody, man, the closer they get to the finish line, the more effort they give. They strain with everything they've got to win the race or at least not come in last, right? They're going after it with everything we've got. So for us, no matter how bad it hurts, no matter how bad your chest is pounding, no matter how out of breath you are from 2018, I want to encourage us on Legacy Zoom tonight, finish strong. Understand, one way or the other, you're going to finish. So why not finish strong and make yourself immensely proud of your performance rather than embarrassed by your lack of it? One way or another, you're going to finish. Why not finish strong and be proud of your effort? Be proud of your performance. Be proud of the way you finish rather than embarrassed by your lack of effort and lack of performance. No, for us, obviously, it's not about performance, but it is about faithfulness to your calling. It is about stewarding your gifts. It is about stewarding the blessings of God on your life. It is about stewarding your talents and your treasure and your time. We are, as Christians, uh, we are to live in response to God and what he's done for us. That's what doing our part to receive what he's promised us looks like. I started this year talking about giving ourselves to the process so that we can receive the promise. I don't know if you remember that, but it was revolutionary to me. Give yourself to the process. Give yourself to the wilderness times. Give yourself to those times of testings because you will receive the promise. That's what faithfulness is all about. That's what living in response to him and what he's done for us is all about because we know we will be, be held accountable for what we did or didn't do with our lives. Now, listen, don't use that as a threat that you're going to hell if you don't do something you should have done. No, no, let it be your motivation uh, that because you're so thankful for what God has done for you, because he's your first love, because he's your top priority, you can't help but give your all. You can't help but give God your best. All you want to do is, is honor him. All you want to do is glorify him because he deserves your best at all times. No, not just at church, not just at Zoom, but in your life group, but not even outside of church. He deserves your best and your all when you're at work, when you're at school, when you're at the store, when you're by yourself. He deserves your best. That's where you want to glorify him. Begin to practice glorifying God in your attitudes, in your words, in your speech, in your thought life, wherever you're at. So let me ask you tonight, we've been talking about finishing strong. What have you started that you need to finish? Or maybe what didn't you start that you should have started? Did you make any New Year's resolutions? You know, uh, have you, have you, do you have them written down anywhere? Or maybe at this point in December, do you even remember what your New Year's resolutions were, what your goals for 2018 were? Or did you even bother to make any? Understand, God has assignments for you to both start and finish. Do you know that? He has assignments for you. Maybe, maybe you never even thought about uh, it being an assignment, but there was a prompting in your heart and you knew it. There was a prompting in your heart and maybe you never got started. Maybe it didn't really happen. Maybe it didn't really materialize. But in our context, you know, is there a dream team that you're not serving on? That you should be? Or have you tried to excuse yourself out of it? Or did you used to serve on that dream team and now you're just not anymore? Or is there a person that God has set you up to reach in your workplace, in your neighborhood? Have you loved them? Have you served them? Have you blessed them? Even like with, with the pay it forward cards, have you paid it forward to them? Have you invited them to church? Have you shared the gospel? Have you shared your testimony? We went through the process of you helping, helping set you up for your testimony. Have you shared your testimony with them? Have you dug into the word? Did you start the Bible reading program, you know, that we have and just kind of let it just kind of pooter out because, because uh, you fell so far behind? Have you started family devotions? 
Have you started praying with your spouse? Have you started praying not just for your children, but with your children? Have you started laying hands on your children and speaking into them and prophesying God's word? The list for us is endless. What have you started, but you haven't finished? Or what have you stopped making progress in? See, it, it doesn't always have to be that you finish because there's goals that can last a lifetime, that can last two, three, four, five years, 10 years, you know, two decades, whatever. But maybe you need to keep up the good work. Maybe you need to stay faithful. Are you with me? You understand what I'm talking about? Understand, this is, Zoom is about leadership development, growing and developing you as a leader. Well, let, guess what? Leaders finish. Anybody can start. People start all the time. They've got visions and they've got plans and God told them this and that. Anybody can start, but it takes character and all of the other attributes that we've been talking about uh, throughout this semester on these Zooms. It takes all of those characteristics to finish strong. One of those attributes is persistence. Listen to this. I love it. Persistence is a bitter plant, but it has sweet fruit. I mean, it's hard to stay faithful. Persistence is hard, especially when you don't want to, especially in the grind, you know, the middle of the race, you know, you start out strong and then you have to stay faithful. And then you kick it in again, you know, for, for the, the last, the home stretch, right? It's hard to stay faithful, but the end result is sweet. The end result of persistence is we, how do we know? Because the Bible says we reap what we sow. That what you sow, you're going to reap. It's a spiritual law. You can't sow and not reap. So I want to encourage you tonight, get started. Stay faithful. Get back in the game wherever you need to. Persevere. Stay persistent. Reap the reward of finishing strong. We have about, what, 20 Oh, goodness, how many days? Come on, Becky, tell me, tell me, tell me. 26. We have 26 days left. You didn't even know what I was asking, and so you kind of did. I got it. We have 26 days left in this, in this year. Let's finish strong. I want to finish with a final thought. Crud, I'm being prompted with all sort of stuff. I want to finish with a final thought, uh, and Pastor Abram already shared it. Finish with the wind in your face. Finish with the wind in your face. You know, I think that in this year, gunning it towards the finish line. And then I had the picture when I think of gunning it towards the finish line. We've talked about the kick at the end of the race. You know, what about like gunning it to get through that yellow light? That warning that says stop, it's about to end. Gunning it towards, you know, the, through the yellow light to safely, safely through the yellow light, not running red lights, but safely uh, gunning it uh, towards the finish line. Refuse to end this year on a whimper. Decide right now where you're at as you're watching me, as you're sitting where you're sitting and lying where you're lying. Decide tonight that you're going to dust yourself off, maybe from a difficult 2018, if need be. Decide tonight you're going to finish strong. Don't finish exhausted. Finish exhilarated. Finish fulfilled and finish satisfied. Finish 2018 making progress, moving forward, advancing, growing, obeying, improving, maturing, and on and on and on. Are you with me? Will you do that? Put a one in the chat if you'll do that. Yeah. It's not I hope to. Remember, we need to make some I will declarations. It's, 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 I will do this. Not I hope to, not I want to, but I will. Let's finish strong, Legacy. I want to pray for us, and then I have some action steps for us. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you that you are going to crown this year with your goodness. God, we receive that. We receive the crowning of this year with goodness. God, that we would walk in your paths and that they would drip and overflow with abundance and blessings. God, we just want to walk in step with you. We want to abide in you so that you can surround us with your goodness so that we can receive and walk in your goodness. Father, I pray for everybody on this line tonight, on this call tonight, make us finishers. And not just finishers, make us strong finishers that we would finish strong, 
that we would finish 2018 well, that we would go into 2019 strong, making progress, advancing, and moving forward, that we would finish with the wind in our face. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, here are our action steps for tonight. The first thing, I cannot do anything, crud. I got nothing. Well, I'm going to have to put them on. There we go. Maybe I got something. I'm sorry. It's not allowing me. I don't have a cursor anymore. Oh, well, we'll listen up and I'll put them on. Legacies and don't laugh, Kenny's. I see you laughing. I see you chuckling. You're on there, and it's every time, and I see it. Here, here's our, here's our, uh, our, our action points. First thing, decide to finish strong. Make a decision. I'm going to finish with the wind in my face. Declare that. Make some I will declarations. Again, it's not I hope to, I want to. That'd be cool if it's I will finish strong. I will be a finisher. The second thing, this is key, write down at least two goals that you're going to accomplish this year. In the next 26 days, write down two goals. It could be finishing something you started. Uh, it could be uh, starting something that you should have earlier. But whatever it is, get the ball rolling. Accomplish two goals. If it's not finishing it, it's getting started and, and moving towards it. And lastly, uh, because this is Legacy Zoom and this is about leadership, find a place where you can start leading. You know, and that could be even just jumping on the dream team and beginning to serve, but find a place to lead, even through servant leadership, through servant leadership, whether it be a church, on your dream team. It could be finding a place to lead in uh, your workplace, at your school in your family, and then just begin to step into that role. This is what I think I need from, can somebody or a couple of you put like a, a something in the chat? It could be anything because I've got nothing, but when you put something, uh, the, the menu bar uh, popped down for me so I can at least get it off of this. There we go. Ha ha! There we go. Thank you, everybody. And so I'm going to unmute. That is it for tonight. Good job tonight. Awesome. Let me unmute everybody. I love you.